Roger Luncheon is done. Police Commander in Siri Saxon. And Yellowtail 60% complete. I am Nuriko Beaufort, and this is Uncut News. Do you see news happening? Send us a tip on us at 592-659-6151. Dr. Roger Luncheon, a longtime executive member of the People's Progressive Party, has passed away after a prolonged illness. He served as cabinet secretary and head of the presidential secretariat for over 20 years and was considered a key player in the government up until 2013 when he was diagnosed with cancer. Nonetheless, he actually remained active in the PPP up until his passing and was rehired as an advisor to the party in 2020. The Ghana Guyana Local Content Conference organized by the Ghana Chamber of Commerce Guyana will bring together consultants and service providers in the upstream petroleum sector in both nations. The conference aims to deepen local capacity and participation in the oil and gas sectors of the two nations as well as foster collaboration and knowledge exchange. Keynote speakers and experts in the field will share valuable insights and experiences that can shape the future of the energy industry in both countries. Ten Guyanese, including former Mayor of Georgetown Ubraj Narayan, have been selected for the 66th No India Program, a 25-day initiative organized by the Indian Ministry of External Affairs to connect diaspora youth with their Indian roots. The program is fully funded by the Indian government and will include visits to places of national importance, interactions with governmental institutions, and cultural experiences in New Delhi, Agra, and Kerala. So, if you are of Indian descent and you are interested in a free trip to India, go to their website and check it out. And that's all the free publicity they're going to get out of me because I'm sorry, they're not paying us for this. So, in other foreign relations news, the Guyana Honorary Consul in Antigua and Barbuda, Robert Rice, expressed concern over recent customer complaints regarding inter-Caribbean airlines. Complaints have surfaced regarding cancelled and delayed flights with growing concern over inadequate attention to these matters from the airline. Rays calls on the governments of Antigua and Barbuda as well as Guyana to engage with inter-Caribbean airlines regarding the matter. Back over in Guyana, Cayman Industries Environmental have approached the Environmental Protection Agency for approval to build a 5.8 megawatt solar farm on the Sustike Linden Highway. The solar farm, costing almost 10 million US dollars, will include solar panels, batteries, generators, and a site control office, and will provide a maximum of 5.8 megawatts of uninterrupted electrical power 24 hours a day to anyone within a 10 kilometer radius. The project is expected to take 14 months from land preparation to start up and will involve clearing an estimated 40 acres of existing forest adjacent to the highway near Lou Creek. Guyana has taken proactive measures to adjust the backlog of over 280 suspected cases of hepatitis C, according to the Ministry of Health. With a focused effort on testing, diagnosis, and treatment, the release from the Health Ministry said that over 35 confirmed positive cases have been found. As part of the government's effort to combat hepatitis, the Health Ministry recently launched the National Hepatitis Clinic at the National Care and Treatment Center in Georgetown. Attention truck owners, between potholes, bad drivers, and high fuel prices, you've got 99 problems to deal with. But with Powered Automotive, your engine ain't one. That's because they stock high-quality pots and spares you need at prices you can't beat. Visit them at lot 491 EE -E Eccles, or call or WhatsApp them at telephone number 6970171. Save big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy-duty truck parts store in Ghana. Tired of waiting on hold, tracking down a delivery driver, or carrying cash for your food orders? She to Eat is here to make your life easier. Ghana's first cashless food ordering and delivery app. Choose from Georgetown's top restaurants, pay securely with your card, and get your food delivered right to your doorstep. With the convenience of being able to order from your phone and the added feature of tracking your order, GT Eats is the ultimate solution for all your food needs. Download the app on Apple and Android stores and start ordering the easy way today. Police Commander of Region 4 Subdivision 4B, Superintendent Mahendra Singh, was injured in a road accident on the East Bank Demerara Public Road this morning. 
Singh and the police driver of his vehicle were taken to the hospital, whilst the truck driver that collided into them was taken into police custody. The accident occurred when a truck drove into the path of the police vehicle heading south along the roadway, causing them to collide head on. He is currently in critical but stable condition. The police in Region 7 are investigating the murder of a 55-year-old shopkeeper, Andrew Harris, who was killed at a back dam in Middle Mazaruni River. The suspect and his 34-year-old co-worker was arrested and a stab wound was found on the victim's upper left chest. Further investigations are currently ongoing. Fazal Khan, a Guyanese free migrant, was killed by bicycle bandits in Georgetown on Saturday. Khan and a colleague were robbed while purchasing food, and Khan was stabbed four times before succumbing to his injuries at the hospital. His relatives alleged that the hospital failed to inform the police immediately, which may impact the investigation. Khan had recently returned to Ghana from Venezuela to work as a tailor to support his family. Now for today's oil update. The Natural Resources Fund will be getting a secretariat in the second half of this year, according to the board chairman Cho Singh. Despite the absence of the secretariat, the NRF has been functioning efficiently, according to them, and has maintained contact with all relevant parties. The NRF board consists of five members, while the Public Accountability and Oversight Committee and Investment Committee have nine and seven members, respectively. The NRF board is chaired by retired Major General Cho Singh, Man, he does everything. Other members of the board are Guyana's permanent representative to the United Nations, Carolyn Rodrigues Briquette, private sector executive Ramesh Duku, former PNC parliamentarian Dunstan Barrow, and former chancellor of the University of Guyana, Professor Compton Bourne. The NRF was established to manage Guyana's natural resource wealth and has made several withdrawals to finance national development priorities. In other oil-related news, ExxonMobil's Yellowtail project, located on the Starbrook block, is 60% completed and expected to produce 250,000 barrels of oil per day upon completion in 2025. The project is part of the development of offshore crude production in Ghana, with projections suggesting it will make the nation the world's largest per capita producer of oil. The project will involve a total development cost of around 10 billion US dollars and will make use of the one Guyana FPSO vessel. And finally, our nation's president is looking for more Chinese investors into Ghana's oil industry, citing tremendous opportunities in the oil and gas sector. The China National Offshore Oil Corporation, also known as Sinuk, is already a co-venture in the Starbrook block alongside Hess and of course Exxon. The president also hopes that more Chinese companies will participate in the auction of the 14 blocks when available, which includes shallow and deep water areas. It might not be robbery season, but the streets are still mean. That's why you need to get security for your home and business through Sheriff Security Service. Sheriff Security offers well-trained guards, armed and unarmed patrol, marine patrol, canine services. These people even got drones. Why? Because your security is their highest priority. You've seen the rest, now hire the best. Hire Sheriff Security Service today. Now for our uncut news, Phil's poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question of current events in Ghana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel at least was. Last night I asked your opinions about reparations for African slavery. But before we get to that, I'm proud to announce our latest addition to the Noble Army, Richard Singh, who is supporting us at the reporter level, the highest level of monthly support we've received so far. So thank you, Richard Singh. And also, a special thank you to David Griffith, Dion Nascimento, Project Zero, and Dimitri V. I appreciate you all. And if you're watching at home and you'd like to support our movement, just hit the link in the video description. Godfrey Brandt says the president did not remember about reparations when he visited England. Sigh. Davy Samaru says all the slaves are gone. What's the big deal now? Who exactly should the reparation be paid to? Is it to the descendants of slaves? And finally, Propafix says the crown owes money to a lot of communities across the world. I doubt reparations will be given. However, the Guyanese government should push the crown slash the English government to subsidize some projects in the nation that will benefit the people. Now for tonight's question. Today is the three-year anniversary of the PPP coming into office. How do you feel about their performance thus far? I want you to think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight, and check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Nico Paul Fortang. Good night, folks.